Hi, welcome to our final video on Unit 4, 4.4. We are talking about exponent and logarithmic equations. We're going to get through a lot of different equations. We're going to use something called a one-to-one -one property and the quadratic. But beyond that, everything else we're using are the same basic properties um, and rules that we've been using in all these videos. It is a lot to get through, so I'm asking that you just persevere and you just keep on trying. Okay. You have seen this slide a lot at this point. Um, this is just a recall. And at this point, I'm hoping you're like this little kitty with his little nose in the air. And you're saying, you know what, Miss Jack? I got this. I have memorized this. I do understand these concepts. Okay. So again, like I said, we're going to be solving logs and exponents. We're going to use that one-to-one. -one. We're going to use properties to simplify, expand, and condense. We will do something with the quadratic formula. And always, 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 please, please remember to check for your extraneous solutions. And what does that mean? It means once you solve and you get a solution, you plug it back into the original. Whether you're using a calculator or not, you're checking if it's a true statement. Okay, so here's my first one. And for this, we're going to start by explaining what that one-to-one -one means. What that one-to-one -one means is you want to get down to the same base on both sides, and that's it. No extraneous information on the other sides. You've already dealt with it. Because once you get down to one base and one base, whether it's um, an exponential base or a logarithmic base or an LN, an E base, it doesn't matter. Whatever your bases are, if they're the same on both sides, you can slash them out and deal with just the remainder. So what does that look like here? Well, I know that 36 can be written as 6 squared. So if I know that, I can rewrite this whole 36 as 6 squared. And what does that look like? It looks like this. So now I can apply an exponent property that tells me if I raise a power to a power, I just multiply those powers. So that looks like that. And now I have a 1 to 1. So guess what I can do? I can delete that. I can cross that out, and I'm left with 2x plus 2 equals x plus 6. From here, it's a simple solve. So I just subtract from both sides to get all my x's to one side, and I'm left with x equals 4. When I plug that in with my calculator, I get a true statement. So this is not an extraneous solution. It is the solution. Here I have another one. Again, I'm trying to get 1 half to look like 64 or 64 to look like 1 half. It's always easier to get the bigger number to look like the smaller number, but getting 64 to look like 1 half is a pretty big leap. Um, but what can I do here? What can I do with this too? That's a negative exponent waiting to happen. So if I write it like this, that's a little bit easier to see. 2 to the negative c is the same as 1 half to the c. So now I can rewrite. Did you know that 64 is the same as writing 2 to the 6th? So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 to the 6th, 1 half, 2 to the negative c. And now I can apply this power rule right here. That becomes 2 cubed equals 2 to the negative c. So I have a 1 to 1, so I can cross out those 2s. So negative c equals 3, therefore c equals negative 3. I plugged that in with the calculator. I checked. I got a true statement back. Therefore, this is my answer. Now I have a you do for you. I will remind you that 16 can be written as 4 squared. And I hope that you work this problem out on your own and that you pause. If you are ready to answer, your answer is going to be negative 1 half. So I hope you check it. And if you didn't get that answer, I hope you retry and check one more time. All right, here's another example of solving some logarithmics, um, specifically what happens when there is no ln or a log or whatever on the other side. If it's just equal to a number, how do I get that? Well, did you know that I could take the log, I can take a base, I can take an e, I can take whatever I want to both sides. But for this, there's two different ways I could solve this. I could see taking e power on both sides. So that's saying e to the ln of x is equal to e to the 6. Well, now I have the same uh, basis, but what does this actually mean? e to the ln of x, e to the ln, hey, I can cross that out because that's ln base e. So that means x equals e to the 6, uh, sorry, 6th. And if I plug that in, that's approximately 403.43. The other way we could have seen that is, is remembering that there is a base e. And so I could say this as base to my equals is equal to x. So we could have solved it that way as well. It really doesn't matter which way you solve it. Here I have another one. Again, I'm going to get everything I, in my power down to get rid of everything except for that log and then go from there. I mean, I may end up having to take um, a, a power 10 to both sides or, or something. We're not really 100% sure just yet, but it just helps to kind of start getting everything to one side. So that becomes 2 log of 5x equals 12. I'm going to divide away that 2 out front. So log of 5x equals 6. Well, now we're stuck. 
if I take the log of both sides, and that's going to be log of log, same ln, it's going to be ln of log, and that's not going to help me. But what is my hidden base here? So if I raise it to that power on both sides, now I can get rid of this. So that's going to become 5x equals 10 to the power of 6, and I divide by 5, and there is what x equals, and if I plug that into a calculator, I get 200,000. Plugging 200,000 back into this original equation gives me a true statement, therefore that is the solution. Okay, here I have a you do for you. Again, I would tell you, um, you're probably going to want to take the E of both sides or set it up with its natural base. But the first thing you're going to want to do is divide away that negative 3. If you're ready to answer your question, I'm going to give you that solve. And that end answer is going to be you should have gotten E to the 8th, and that's an approximate 2,981. Okay. Okay, so for this one, again, I want to do a one-to-one -one because, look, I have log base 4, log base 4, log base 4. So I'm already ready for success because it's the same basis. However, I have this product rule in between that I have to deal with. So if I rewrite that product rule, that's going to be log base 4. Ah, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Try that again. Okay, so that's going to be... That's going to be, I went too far. Here we go. That's going to be log base 4 of 3 times x minus 2, because that's that product rule right there. And that's still equal to log base 4 of x. But look, now I have my log bases that I can deal with right here. So I can cross this out. I can cross this out. So I'm left with x is equal to 3x minus 2. Now you can finish this solve, right? That's going to be 3x minus 6. Uh, subtract 3x from both sides. You're left with negative 2x equals negative 6. Divide by negative 2. And x equals 3. Plug that in and check, and you see that it is a true solution. So now I have this one for you. Um, no, this is still me. I'm so sorry. This is an I do. My bad. So here I look and I see, oh, hey, I have a log base on the same, on both sides and they're both the same. I don't have to do anything else. Heck yeah. So I can cross those out. That becomes X squared plus three equals 52. I'm going to subtract my three X squared equals 49. So I square root, but here we have to know that X is not equal to seven, but it's equal to plus or minus seven. So I test both of those to make sure that that is, they are both the solutions. Now here's one for you. So the thing I would ask you is you've got a log base six on both sides. What are you allowed to do? Now, if you're joining me back for that answer, your answer should have been one or two. Okay. Moving on to solving some exponential functions. So what can I do with this? I can do a lot of things with this. Um, I could convert it to a log. Technically, that's something I could do. I could uh, take the ln or log of both sides. There's like there's a lot of things that we could do. And I'm going to go ahead and take the log of both sides. And so what does that look like? That becomes log of 4 to the x equals log of 13. And why did I do that? And I could have used ln. It doesn't matter. But why did I do that? It's so that I can drag this x forward. That now becomes x log of 4 equals log of 13. And what can I do to get the x by itself? I can divide away log of 4 on both sides. Doesn't that look like a change of base formula? Heck yeah, it does. So I plug log of 13 over log of 4 into my calculator, and I get approximately 1.85. Now plug that in, check my answer. It is a good answer. So now here's another one. But instead of taking the log of both sides, because it's a natural base E, I'm probably going to want to take the ln of both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. That's the ln of e to the fourth, oh, sorry, e to the four minus 3x equals the ln of six. Okay, well, what's the ln of e? That's going to cancel out. So that's going to become four minus 3x equals ln of six. That's a 6. And now I just want to get everything away from that x. So I'm going to divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. And this is what equals x. So if I plug this into a calculator, I should get approximately 0 0.74. And that's my good answer. That's my end answer. So here I have a you do. Again, I would tell you to take the ln of both sides. See what you can do. Go from there. If you're joining us back for that answer, your answer should be approximately 0 0.10. Okay, I've got one more example set for us to get through before we actually hit those quadratics. That's the kind of funky spot for us. So 
um, here, I'm going to take the log or the natural log of both sides. And just to change it up, let's go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. So what can I do here? This is a power rule, just like we did last time. I can yank it to the front. But if I yank it to the front, I want to make sure I put it in its parentheses so I can actually see it for what it is. And hey, look at that. Can't I distribute this ln now? Yes, I can. So that's going to become 3x ln of 4 minus ln of 4 equals 2 ln of 3 minus x ln of 3. And now you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot. What am I going to do with all that? The biggest thing you're trying to do is just getting that x by itself. So I'm going to isolate. I'm going to add anything with the x's to one side. Now, I can't actually combine those, but I can put them to one side. And anything that doesn't have an x, I'm going to get rid of it to the other side. So what does that end up looking like? That ends up looking like 3x to the ln, sorry, 3x times ln of 4 uh, plus x ln of 3 equals 2 ln of 3 plus ln of 4. And now I can factor out those x's. and divide away all of this nonsense because that's now what x equals. Now, I can plug all this into a calculator and I get approximately 0 0.68 and that's what my x equals. Now I could have wasted my time uh, condensing all of this down because this right here that's a power rule, that's a power rule, that's a product rule, and it's a quotient rule. I really could condense all that down into one giant term. However, I'm going to end up plugging into the calculator anyway so why waste my time? Uh, right and also, on that previous example, I think I already cleared my ink, but why waste my time when I'm going to plug it into a calculator? And if it was a no calculator example, then unless it tells you, like if it's a free response question, unless it tells you, hey, condense it down, or if it's a multiple choice and you see your only answers are condensed, then you just, you stop where you think you need to stop. You stop when you actually get X isolated. You get to decide how much you want to condense or expand after that. But once X is isolated, you're good to go. That's the big deal. Get X by itself, because that's what solve means, doesn't it? Get it by itself. Okay, so now we have this problem that I want you to be able to do. I highly recommend that you take the log or ln of both sides and you deal with this power property first. If you're ready to answer this question, then your question should be approximately negative 1.07. That should be your end answer. Okay, now I know we've done a lot and I put this in here because I know a lot of times we get this point where we're like, oh my gosh, I just can't math. And that's okay. It's okay to have those walls. It's okay to have that. But the thing about these videos is that you're learning to watch and expose yourself to information and you're learning to ask questions. You're not necessarily watching these videos and expecting mastery. That's the point of coming to class and practicing for 90 minutes. So make sure that you are persevering because I know you can do it. Just hang in there. Okay, we have a few more equations to do. Um, we're going to be using the quadratic form. And what is the quadratic form? That's that ax squared plus bx plus c. So how does this translate back to that? Well, if I say that e to the x is equal to some other variable, and in uh, in other maths we call this u substitution, so we're going to do that right here. Well, here's e, here's that x, so what's left is that 2, so that's actually u squared. Here's e, here's that x, so 6u and then minus 16 equals zero. Well, hey, look at that. Doesn't that now look like my quadratic form? Heck yeah, it does. So we are going to use this to finish solving this because now I can factor this, can't I? Okay, this is gonna be u plus a, u minus two equals zero. And so then we can solve where u equals negative eight and um, u equals two. And then we take this information and plug it back in. So e to the x equals negative 8, e to the x equals 2. And so we take the ln of both sides because it's a natural log and it's easier to deal with an ln because you're going to be able to cancel that out. So x is equal to ln of negative 8 and x is equal to ln of 2. Well, what did I tell you guys in a previous video about natural logs and logs of a negative number? Well, they're undefined. Therefore, this answer on the left-hand side can't exist um, because it's going to be undefined. Therefore, your only answer is going to be x equals ln of 2 or an approximate 0.69. Here's one for you. 
I would tell you use the same thing. Declare e to the x is u. And I would tell you to move your 8 over. So this should look like e to the 2x plus 2e to the x minus 8 equals 0. Use this information, plug in your u, factor it out, solve, plug your e to the x back in, and what answers do you get? Okay, if you're joining us back for that uh, answer reveal for this one, you should end up with ln of 2 as your only viable solution, which is approximately 0 0.69 as well. Okay, our uh, last couple of sets of examples, we're going to finish some more solves and really work on plugging in an extraneous solution just to check. Um, and so here, again, you're trying to get down to a one-to-one. -one. That's your end goal. So let's use some properties. Here is a uh, product property right here. So that's actually the ln of x plus 2 times 3x minus 2 is equal to 2 ln of 2x um, and then this is a power rule right here. So it's actually equal to the ln of 2x squared, which is the ln of 4x squared, because 2 squared is 4. Uh, and that, and then right here, I can go ahead and deal with that. So x plus 2, 3x minus 2, I'm going to want to actually factor that out, or sorry, FOIL that out. So that becomes 3x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 4. So that's actually going to become the ln of 3x squared plus 4x minus 4. And now I have a one-to-one. -one. So now I can actually get rid of those lns. So this becomes 3x squared plus 4x minus 4 equals 4x squared. So if I subtract a 4x squared from both sides, I'm now left with um, negative x squared plus 4x minus 4 equals 0. If I flip them, then I'm going to get the positive. Oops. And now I can actually uh, factor this out into x minus 2 and x plus 2. Sorry, x minus 2, x minus 2. And so that means that x is going to equal positive 2 and you plug that back in. You can check this solution in the original um, equation, or you can confirm it graphically by locating the intersections of these uh, two points right here, of this equation and this equation. You could locate their intersections graphically and see that it equals two, okay? I know that was a lot to take in, but I do hope that you try your you do with this. This is the quotient rule, I would remind you. It's not quite the same as the product. I can't spell quotient, but that's the quotient rule. So uh, just to help you out, that should look like that's a seven. Could you solve it from there? That's what I'm hoping. Could you maybe solve that? Okay. And my final example that I'm going to do is an extraneous solution. Um, I'm actually going to plug it back in and show you the check because all this time I've been plugging it into a calculator to show that check. So here we have log 12 bases on both sides. So what I'm going to do is use my product property to get rid of that plus sign. So that's log of 12 of 12x times x minus 1 equals 2. Um, and so now if I distribute, I can go ahead and say this is log base 12 of 12x squared minus 12x equals 2. And I'm going to use what's called the inverse property. I know I didn't speak of it much before, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you now. And that's um, recognizing that this could be, this 2 right here could be rewritten as log base 12 of 12 squared. And we saw this property in our properties of logs. However, I never showed you how to go back to it. Because look, if you look at this log base 12 of 12, that whole thing is going to disappear and only you're going to be left with the two. So now I can write that. And now we have uh, a one-to-one -one property on both sides. But I do have to know what 12 squared is, which is 144. So now that I can actually get rid of these log base 12s, I can see that this is 12x squared minus 12x equals 144. And I can subtract that 144 over to get it equal to zero so that I can actually um, factor. And so that factor, because I'm going to pull out a 12 first, is going to be x minus 4, x plus 3, 
equals zero. And if you're struggling with your factors, I ask that you pause and see how I got from this step to this step. Can you do it the same way? Can you get the same uh, factor? Because if you can't, you might have to go back and watch that algebra video on factoring. So now I get two solutions of x equals positive four and x equals negative three. But now it's important to actually check those. So we said that it was four and negative three. So let's plug those in. Log of 12 of 12 times four plus log of 12 of four minus three equals two. So this is now log base 12 of 48 plus log base 12 of three equals two, which is the same as saying log base 12 of 48 times three equals two, which is the same as saying log base 12 of 144 equals two. Well, hey, what do we know about 144? That's the same as saying log base 12 of 12 squared equals two. And what do we know? This whole thing can cross out. So two equals two. Yes, that is a correct solution. So we at least know four is correct. So we still have four and negative three. We know four is good. Now we're testing negative three. Log base 12 of 12 times negative three plus log of base 12 of negative three minus one equals two. This is the same as saying log base 12 of negative 36 plus log base 12 of negative four equals two. And we have a negative number here and a negative number here. And those are un defines cannot equal two. Therefore, this was not correct. Our only answer was four. And you can see that x equals negative three is our extraneous solution. It is not allowed. So this is why it's so important to double check your solutions. Whether you get one solution, two solutions, 10 solutions, check all of your solutions. Okay, here is your you do. Um, I hope you deal with this quotient property first before seeing your one to one of those LNs. If you're joining us back for the answer for this one, the answer for this, you should have only gotten an answer of three. Make sure you're double checking your extraneous solutions. Okay, so some closure. Um, this is the end of our unit four. Uh, we talked about solving logs in this as well as solving exponents. We use that one to one, which means do everything in your power. Use simplification, expansion, condensation. Use everything in your power to get to the same basis, whether it's exponential basis, log basis, or LNs. It doesn't matter. Do it, whatever you got to do to get it down. You can also use the quadratic formula using that U substitution. And finally, 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 always check your extraneous solutions. Thank you guys, and I will see you in class.